today's weekly blog is Little Boom the Budgie. Little Boom the Budgie, who uh, is a bit dirty uh, because he's bright yellow, but unfortunately he likes to go foraging. And so you can see he gets a little dirty, and I do try and wash it, although he likes to have a bath himself. But I do actually try and get him in occasionally and actually hold him down <laughs> and try and wash some of the shit that's on him off. Um, he's not usually camera shy, um, but he's uh, oh, he's going up there, is he? Uh, so anyway, Little Boom is in my blog because I've been a little bit worried about him this past week or two. Uh, I can't put my finger on what is wrong with him. He's not showing any particular um, symptoms, uh, except for the fact that he... Where's he gone? <laughs> I think he's gone into my head. Uh, except for the fact that he sleeps quite a bit, and he always has to be in physical contact with some of the other budgies, and to be honest with you, they don't particularly like that. Um, little Boom uh, was brought in about a week ago, and he seems to be fine. I mean, he's still eating, he's still drinking, he's still active during the day, as you can tell. Uh, he still chirps occasionally, although the chirping that you hear at the moment is not him. It's uh, <laughs> Susie and Sergio, the owl finches, who are in because I'm trying to get them to uh, see if they will mate. They won't mate in the open aviary because the, uh, the zebra finches steal all the nests. But they might be able... <laughs> They might be able to uh, net, uh, breed if I gave them some sort of time on their own, some space on their own, so that's what I've done. I'm going to keep them in until the end of the month, and if they haven't managed to reproduce, I'm going to let them back out. Now, you can, it's suggested that you winter owl... There it goes. Oops, that's that's little, that's little boom there, making a loud noise. Uh, you can't even see him. Come here. You do it. There, there. Oh, he's flown away now. Hang on, I'll just have to go rescue him. The main news this week uh, is actually um, all about my uh, recovery from... <laughs> Little Boom has gone walkies again. From um, the uh, extraction of my tooth. Uh, I had a tooth out up there and um, it really hurt. I was very, very worried uh, about it, even though I was told not to be too, too worried about it. Uh, I was quite worried about it. It took 20 minutes for the tooth to come out. It didn't want to come out. Stop doing that. Um, it didn't want to come out. Uh, and she had to inject it four times during the procedure. In fact, um, the problem was that the while the gums were going all numb, uh, the actual... The actual... Oh, he's on the back of the chair now. The actual uh, infection inside the um, tooth uh, was interfering, and that's what has sort of led it to be, you know, and it's basically all swollen up. Now, I have been on, uh, not a liquid diet, but uh, um, <laughs> I've been drinking through straws and everything this week. I'm off painkillers completely, so that's fine. That was within three days. I spent the first three days just eating and drinking through a straw, uh, on the other side of my mouth only, um, I was not allowed uh, any chilled stuff or any uh, really hot stuff because both of those two things... <laughs> Off he goes, he's on the top of a cage over there now. Um, because neither of those two things uh, were any good for it. They'd set off the nerve, so I couldn't do that. It took a good day and a half before it stopped sort of bleeding. Um, right now it's sort of closed up, I think, but the, the, the bit around the top there, on the inside, the gums are, are massive. Like, if I put my tongue there, it feels like there's an ulcer on the, you know, it's like that. That's going to take a while to go down. It may have come as no surprise that this week I, ha I have therefore, you know, budget and everything like that, including the healthy eating, has gone completely out of the window. Uh, I, I spent a fortune travelling in and out by bus as well because I didn't want to get it cold or, or wet or, you know, I wanted to try and basically have as much rest time this week as possible. Next week I'm going to go back to walking, uh, but um, I imagine that next week's going to be another iffy week in terms of um, 
uh, eating and stuff like that. And I will just have to have a completely new start with that uh, in October when uh, the the tooth has, you know, when that area has, has, has sorted itself out and actually fully recovered. Um, and then hopefully the neuralgia will have gone with it, I, I am hoping. Uh, so the only other news um, of this week is basically that we are now at the point where uh, the daylight hours and the night uh, time hours, uh, astronomically speaking, are the same. Um, everybody knows about the the winter and the summer solstice being the you know the longest and the shortest days, but obviously there are two days of the year where uh, the the time of light and darkness are exactly the same, and those are the quarter years, and they're the 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 equinoxes in the spring and in the autumn. I did say that I thought that as soon as we passed the equinox, it would not be worth going to the uh, allotment after after work. Uh, the problem is that I don't finish work till five, and it takes me a good hour to get there. That means I can't start work at the allotment until six, and it takes me another half an hour or to get home. Um, therefore, as it's getting dark now, uh, by seven thirty it's dark. Um, I, I have less than an hour. <laughs> what? And it's getting to the point where there's that's that's just not. The time it takes to get there and the effort it takes to get there versus doing it um, is not uh, just not viable. It's okay because we knew that was going to happen all along and of course as soon as we pass the vernal equinox next year I'll be back down there. So for six months of the year I'll be doing it but for the next six months I won't. Uh, this doesn't mean that there's not a lot to do at the allotment and it doesn't mean that I'm, I'm staying away. In fact, it probably means that I'll be spending more time down there because I'll be spending whole days over the weekend uh, down there doing our winter-based projects now that we've almost, we're this far away from completing the ground uh, work ready for the spring, uh, and then we've got to do other stuff um, which is really more um, construction-based anyway. Uh, so that's what we have to look forward to on, on uh, that side of things. And now... Uh, as I'm feeling absolutely knackered at the end of this week, and we are now past five days since the extraction, um, we're nearly at a week, and I, you know, I, I've, I'm nearly at the stage where I feel that I'm recovering from the recovery, if that makes sense. At the moment, I still feel like it's not actually gone away yet. Um, but after a week, uh, I will expect then to start properly recovering from it, if that makes sense. It takes quite a long while because, you know, I am 31 and this was basically um, quite invasive surgery. I mean, she put nutcrackers around the tooth, wiggled it around and, and then yanked it out. Um, <laughs> you know, and whilst it was numb for maybe the time it was actually happening, you know, the, the, the blood was everywhere and the, the inflammation and the pain, um, you know, it still happened. And so uh, I've had to deal with that. And I think I've done quite well, although I recognise, obviously, that there has been issues. And to, to tell you the truth, I would rather a quick recovery and a, a little splurge over this, ne over this sort of fortnight than, you know, a, a stoic, hard, let's, let's still do, you know, uh, eat cabbage leaves or whatever and find that I actually can't eat anything at all um, because of, you know, I, I just have to concentrate on getting this sorted out. Uh, before I go back to my, my sort of health kick um, projects. Uh, and that is it for this week.